Oh boy, we have gone live. Uh, Houston, we have a ring light. Who cares? I don't know. Uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and get started as people trickle in uh, into the program. Oh, Kelly Jordan is already here. Oh my God, this is fantastic. Okay, great. Well, then I will speed through the intro. Normally, I'm just uh, uh, wasting a whole bunch of time uh, as I, uh, but essentially, welcome to What's the Big Idea, the game show that goes, <laughs> what? Uh, well, I'm your, I'm Eric, your game master tonight. We have a five question quiz about the ambitious and insane ideas that might change the world forever, even if maybe they don't. Uh, competing tonight is, I'm so excited, uh, it is author, director of the Explorers Club, and an actual space explorer, Kelly Girardi. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and invite her in. Uh, uh, let's see. Da, 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 go. Hello? Waiting for, waiting for Kelly. Hello? Hello! Hey! <laughs> Hi, Kelly! Hi! Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for doing the show. I'm so excited. I'm ready to win a lot of money. Oh, yes. The huge amounts of prize money is on its way. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, this is going to be very exciting. So, uh, um, Kelly, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? You are, uh, this is a whole intro that I jumped over, but you are both an educator and a doer. And I think that's <laughs> so interesting because I, I see so many people in the space world who are one or the other, and they're both great, but you're doing and teaching at the same time. And that's what I think is really special about you. But uh, you tell me. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, I've had a super non-traditional path in the space industry, and I, I really credit that to a lot of success that I've been able to find. You know, I started out with a film degree and quickly decided that, you know, it wasn't quite the right fit for me, although I'm still a big fan. Um, and then I ended up working in space policy and space media and, and then slowly but surely found my way really interested in technology and rockets. I led business development at a rocket company. I was doing bioastronautics research myself, and today, I'm a scientist astronaut candidate with Project Possum. It's a suborbital research group, and I get to test spacesuits in microgravity and do NASA-supported research in zero-G, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I think I'm catching up to your voice. Um, yes, I mean, that is so exciting. So you've actually gone up in the microgravity. Uh, uh, you've done experimentation in microgravity, right? That is correct. I've gotten to do a number of microgravity flights where you're floating like Superman in zero G. And in my case, I got to test a number of uh, commercial spacesuits and NASA supported research, which is really cool. That's the dream. I mean, you're doing it. You're living the dream. And now we're going to get you a whole bunch of money on our silly fake game show. Uh, so I think we're just going to get into it, if that's all right with you. Um, Perfect. I'm ready. All right. So you are five questions away. We're just five questions away from uh, winning big money and being our what's the big idea reigning champion. It, feel free to, if people in the comments know the answer, feel free to yell them uh, um, if you get stumped. Again, this is for millions and billions of dollars. Uh, so feel free to help out Kelly. Um, and all the I'm going to need it. So I need everyone to be chiming in, please. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good to be good. Um, so uh, uh, we've custom made this quiz uh, to your area of expertise, human space exploration. Uh, how comfortable are you in that space? I am not comfortable with trivia at all, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I, that's all we need is, is doing our best. So I am going to, oh my God, this is the first time. Oh, here's the camera flip button. So we have our question board up here. Uh, what's the big idea? We're going to get things started. Human space, space exploration we've already talked about. Uh, so we're going to start with question one. You have one minute per question out of five questions. First question is for $10 million. All right, here we go. No pressure. No pressure. Which of the following is the name of a real astronaut training program? <laughs> Project Possum, Star Fox Training, or Armadillos of Space? You know, this is a great question, um, and thankfully one that I know the answer to. So first, I'm excited to be a multimillionaire already. Congrats. But, well, um, don't your <laughs> thank hat. you. Say which one's right. I'm excited. So the answer to this one is Project Possum. Um, and the acronym is pretty funny, and so is the logo, but it's a program that was originally focused on polar suborbital science in the upper mesosphere. It's this really not well understood middling layer of our atmosphere, and there are these really high altitude clouds that this program was created to study because we don't know a lot about them, but we do think they're sensitive indicators of climate change. And so Project Possum was the program that brought to life a number of uh, scientists and citizen scientists and researchers 
researchers and academics who could come together, train for a suborbital space flight that would be put together specifically to research these high altitude clouds. So I'm going to go with no audience help needed on this one with number one, Project Possum. You are, let's see if you are correct or not. You are of course correct, Project Possum. Congratulations, you've just won. Oh, oh, oh here it is. Oh. $10 million uh, uh, on question one. Uh, that's our easy one, just a uh, heads up. They get harder after this. Uh, okay. um, but I think you're gonna do fine. I think you're gonna do great. We're gonna jump right into question number two. I'm gonna flip it back around. All right, question number two, another trivia question here. According to the Earth Similarity Index, place the following celestial bodies in order from most similar to Earth to least. So we have them just in uh, solar system order. You let us know which ones are, which put them in order most similar to Earth to least. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna go with, but I'm gonna ask for some audience participation because I see we're jumping in numbers and I, I know that I have a lot of really, really smart space geeks that are joining <laughs> us right now. Um, so uh, let's start with Mars. You know, we'll start with the easy one. Uh, we know that at one point Mars had a warm, wet, moist um, environment, and we are trying to figure out what happened in the time since. Um, so we'll start with Mars as the closest analog and the most ideal place for our next giant leap in human space exploration. Right. And then we're going to go in between Venus and Mercury, and I would love to see, see some of you guys commenting now. What do you guys think? Venus or Mercury as the next closest celestial body, closest as in analog to Earth, not closest as in how far? Yeah, I mean, Mars seems like the gimme, but I think the tough one comes here between Mercury and Venus. Uh, uh, both of them yeah. are great. <laughs> so I will, I will throw out um, Venus only because I'm thinking the cloud tops of Venus have this just incredibly similar um, atmosphere where, you know, potentially, who knows, life could be possible with the chemical makeup at the cloud tops of Venus. So, oh, I see a lot of people adding Venus, it looks like. All right, audience has it. We're going to go with Mars, Venus, Mercury. Mercury. All right, let's see what the cube says. Uh, the correct answer is Mars, Mercury, Venus. Venus is so You guys, it is, it edges did we out. lose it all? Mercury is slightly easier. Uh, according to the Earth Similarity Index, uh, uh, this is something I, I, I looked up today. Uh, uh, they, it's, you know, edges it out barely, uh, but it does uh, beat it out just by a little bit. Is that surprising to you? How much did we lose? <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry. You don't lose the money. You just didn't win twenty million dollars. Uh, unfortunately, oh. uh, you could have used that money. I'm sure. Uh, that's okay. We're gonna have more chances to win some so, some big fake cash. Uh, hold on, let me get my cube ready. Okay, so now we move on to the big old idea. That's the next one in this uh, uh, cube cube, or question cube. Uh, so we'll flip it back around. We are going to question three. This is a big idea from history. Okay, let's see how this one goes. Oh yes, this is a favorite. 17th century astronomer Anton Maria Schwelius of Rita, uh, I copied and pasted that, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, theorized <laughs> that if Jupiter has inhabitants, they must be larger and more blank than the inhabitants of Earth, proportioned to the characteristics of the two spheres. Um, so what is the missing word in this quote? 17th century astronomer obviously oh. doesn't know a whole lot about, uh, uh, about Jupiter, has never been there, um, but what, is, what did he theorize? was the case for Jupiterians. Oh, I'm thinking larger and more heavy, more strong. Um, anyone in the audience want to help me out with some synonyms here? What could fill in that blank? <laughs> yeah, larger. I feel like I need to phone a friend. Blunt. Larger <laughs> and. Oh, we should introduce, uh, we should elongate. Uh, that's a good guess. Elongate, oh, yes, that's an interesting one. Hmm. Wider. Okay. okay. Wider. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, I, I feel like we, we have a theme going here. I um, think so. Okay. I am going to go with my initial guess, which is more heavy. All right. For $2 billion is the missing word heavy. The missing word is beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jupiterians, you know, what's really funny, I'm located right now in Jupiter, Florida. And so that that is a nice <laughs> compliment to this question. Maybe that's what he was talking about. He was trying to reach Jupiter, Florida. Uh, oh, I think we Oh, let's see. Loading, loading. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> okay, I feel like it's coming back now. Okay, we got a, a thumbs up. Okay, good, good, good. I uh, can, I can okay. hear back. You are back. Okay. Oh, you hear Kelly only. Oh, maybe we're having some issue. I'm frozen. I'm frozen. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, keep helping. Uh, it's the Kelly show now. You know what? Do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the very nerdy thing of trying to open my... Um, uh, 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 room door to see if some Wi-Fi can uh, leak back in. Okay, it looks like we have, yeah. have two questions left. Uh, maybe that'll help. I don't know why yes, open the door uh, and let the <laughs> Wi-Fi in. <laughs> let the Wi-Fi get in here. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. It can't hurt. Um, okay, good. So we are back. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, you missed that one. So you missed out on two billion dollars. Uh, but there's still two more chances to make up for it. Um, we are going to move on to question four, which is real big or real fake. In this scenario, I'm going to give you a solution to a real big problem, and you have to tell me if I've made it up or if it is something someone tried. Uh, so real big if it's a real okay. thing or real fake if I made it up. Copy? All right, I'm going to flip it back around. All right, here we go. Next question, question four. The Golden Spike Company was a 2010 space transportation startup that promised private flights to the surface of the moon. In January 2013, it contracted with Northrop Grumman for the design of a new lunar lander. By April 2013, they were shut down after their Indiegogo raising only 19,000 of their $240,000 goal. Is this a real, uh, is this a real big idea or a real fake idea? Okay, so this is where my love of commercial spaceflight comes in and all of the audacity in this industry. But Golden Spike Company is a very real company. I'm going to have to go with real. Um, you know, it's in Mojave. There is a permanently parked rotary rocket, really, really just giant artifact. And um, everyone calls it a testament to failure because it's important that you have these giant ideas and these big ideas and that you go for them and you try to fund them and you try to make them real. And that's exactly the vision that Golden Spike Company had. And you know what? In a couple of years, we're going to be back commercially on the moon and it won't sound so crazy after all. So I'm going to go with real. Exactly. Just ahead of their time. Real, okay, people are, I think I'm coming back. Yes, you're correct. Absolutely right, it is real. Uh, we have one final question for you, Kelly. Um, okay, uh, I'm ready, final uh, so question. One, it's our, what's the big idea? Final question, yes, here we go. Uh, I'll describe a scenario, a problem. You have to tell me what the experts in this field, um, <laughs> what the experts in this field came up with as a solution. So uh, this is for $1 trillion. This is, this is the big one. So $10 million, don't feel bad about missing the 20. The last question is this one. Despite so many current day advancements, human space exploration can seem both something from a distant future and a bygone era. On the cusp of the golden age of spaceflight, one science communicator and space explorer set out to demystify the space by doing what? 
Oh man. So I, I don't know. My, my humble instincts are to not <laughs> possibly think that you are referencing me or my book. <laughs> no, humble is where you're, um, getting, you're getting off. No, no, no. Don't be humble. Uh, humble is where you lose all the money, dollars. right? <laughs> That's where I go broke. Exactly. Um, go for it. All right, all right. I'm going to just lean in and own it. I, I will say that I set out to write a book called Not Necessarily Rocket Science, where I want to demystify the commercial spaceflight industry and help everyone get a floor and get themselves started. Kennedy's present and future in space. I think we lost you again. Back to the go. Can you guys? Oh, oh, he's alive. People see that I'm moving, uh, but please do. Yes, okay, Kelly, you're back. Okay, fantastic. He's gone. Maybe he went to space. I wish. Uh, open the window for 5G. Hilarious. Uh, here's the review of problem. It's my terrible Wi-Fi connection. I'm going to boost it up for next time. But Kelly, thank you so much uh, 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 for playing our game. You have absolutely one big idea. You're the reigning big guy champion. Uh, to all the viewers out there, do go get her book, Not Necessarily Rocket Science. Uh, it's fantastic, and it will demystify the space for you. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Kelly, any last tips? Thank you so much. It was a whole lot of fun, and I'm going to recommend Starlink for you for your next Wi-Fi setup. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, Kelly, you already follow her, follow us. Uh, we're going to do this again next Monday. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>